trip being made back to Gasoline Alley, we assume, to get fuel in the car to qualify. Sebastian Saavedra is on the bubble. He has crashed that car. Now, if nobody bumps him out, he can start in his position, even if he has to go to another car. That's the new rule this year. Which works for everyone, unless you're starting last anyway. So <laughs> yeah, right. he would be the only person that actually that rule wouldn't help. But the, when I see Takuma Sato and I see Jacques Lazier and I start to see these speeds, it hasn't happened yet, but Sebastian Saavedra, I think, is going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I'm, Sato's on another sticker run. Ah, uh, but the yellow came on. Yeah. And, and uh, that's good. Qualification attempt. Yeah. For TK, Tony Kanaan rolls it up. Yep. Yeah. So Sato, I'm sure now, I if they see what TK does, they, they, may, line. they need to get in line. Now, so. the thing is, they just sent him out. Yeah. So he's got to circulate the entire way around and get back into line. But there's, there's time. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. there's 40 minutes left. But I'm surprised with the time we saw for him that they just didn't sit him tight there a little bit and present him. But it's still a little early. Still a little early. Maybe. There's the clock and the countdown up at the top of your screen. A little over 39 minutes remaining on this final day of qualifying. And guys, maybe part of the problem is, unlike yesterday, we're not seeing any dramatic fall in temperature, humidity, anything. It's pretty much stayed steadfast for the last 30 to 40 minutes. We were, we were hoping that we'd have a little cooler temperatures, right? We're at 91.6 degrees. We got 123 degree track temperature. The humidity has been relatively stable at 49 to 50% all day long. So the track temperature is down only one degree in about the last half hour. But the question mark, we've seen Sato just do a 225.4, Lazier doing a 225.2. The question is, how much was the draft? What kind of toe were these guys getting? And the way Jan's looking at me, he's thinking they're okay. Now, think about Tony Kanaan here. We saw them making multiple changes mm -hmm. on the car, and he hasn't run it. Mm -hmm. We saw them change yep. the ride height, at least the push rod length on the left rear. We saw him change the rear wing, and they're rolling it up to present. And, and we heard from Marco to say, okay, let's make a couple more changes to this and give him another four-lap run, four lap run, make sure he can run it flat. Instead? Well, he's going to do that in qualifying. Well, let's do it as an attempt. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, this, yeah. That really gets your attention. You have not got a read on it. You have to trust your team. And they will be talking him through the whole time, saying, Tony, we've done this before. So, you, you know what these changes feel like. So you just, you talk about that, Jan, with those changes, and turn one is where he's lost at the last two turns. So when that green flag comes out and you know you need to hustle it down in there, <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about a leap of faith and, and just run it in there and roll in the dice. That's, that's what's going to be happening for TK. However... Hey, Devil's advocate. Getting down to crunch time here, and you know what champions do when you got to do it? You rise up, you're a champion. Rise up, kick its ass, give me four good laps, put her in a show, baby. We need you. Just a reminder, this is not his final attempt. Right. If it feels not right, the reason he's a champion is he knows when to play him and when not to. This car does not have a strike against it, so he will have three chances here in the last 36 minutes. The green thing on the right there that looks like it's foist right at him, that's just blowing some air on him, keep him cool, circulating a little breeze. And, and Sato is yeah. making his way to the line. Too. Just, as, just as we said, we bet he's going to come back in and present. <laughs> the idea of the fan is to keep your eyes and the sweat from dripping down when you're sitting stationary to not getting into your eyes and yeah. burning your eyes before it's time to qualify. Hmm. And you would think just a fan doing that, oh, that can't be that, that rewarding and, and keep it that cool, but it does. Oh, yeah. When you're sitting right in that cockpit, there's no air swirling around. You got the, the motor temperature from behind creeping into the cockpit, it feels really good. He talked about sweat on his eyes. You just see him, he had kind of a, yep. a, can sure. a little hanky there wiping off the, the sweat around your eyes.
Hey, fellas, maybe the gods are smiling on Tony Kanan. There is a giant cloud that has occluded the sun for the first time today. It hasn't affected the temperature, but it will if it stays there. Just needs to follow him around the lap. Yeah. <laughs> well, the engine's fired. Cars in gear. And TK moves away. Well, you know, everybody from that Andretti Autospar team right now is just watching. And there's that cloud. You can see the sun being held behind it, so timing's everything. Looking for a four-lap average in excess of 223.634. Has been in eight previous 500s, was runner up here in 2004. Began his career here in Indianapolis driving for the Hollywood Mo Nunn team in 2002. Started fifth and finished 28th. He has never started worse than sixth here at the Indianapolis 500. An incredible starting performance record, but not this year. The green flag will come out this time around. And that's what we're going to be watching about once he, he takes that green, honking that car down into turn one. That's, that's what he wants to get past that. He gives off corner number four. The green flag is waving, and Tony Kanaan begins his effort to get into the 2010 Indianapolis 500 field. Okay, come on now. That looks good coming off there. 222.5 as a warm up. He turned in at 227, so he's easing into that. But that 220. Close. 222.5 warm up. He could keep stepping that up. That's a good warm up lap. I think he's going to like this. Down yeah, below the white line a little bit in turn number four. Should be. 224 and change. Here's the completion of lap one. It's 224.382. Yeah. And he's through turn one again. No drama there. Had plenty of space with the car up to the wall. He even gave himself a bit of a buffer. That was 226.8. Again, it depends on wind direction. He's got a little bit of a headwind. That's why the speeds are slower. He'll be faster today turning into turn three. In fact, 229.8 was his wow. turn into three. So the, the ends of the racetrack have changed today. A little bit of tailwind in here. Yeah. He is halfway through his qualification run. Five miles down, five miles to go. The second lap speed, 224.240, just a little bit slower. Huge, but this is huge. If he can just maintain this. His turn one speed was higher to 226. He'll be looking for a big number into turn number three, 229.6. John Andretti on the far left, and other members of the Andretti Auto Sport team of the 7-Eleven crew. It's a little bit slower. Four. Here it is. A little bit slower, but should still be in the ballpark. White lap, white flag lap. Third lap, 224.072. He's maintaining that 224 average. It's 222.2 .2 at the moment. That would put him safely in the field. Ooh. Heard a little bit of possible lifting there. He's lost. He's he's lost some speed here, but yeah, he's still okay. I mean, he's got that 224.2 average, so he's okay. Well, this will be down in the 223s, though. But then the average should be good enough. Let's see what it is. The checkered flag waves, and Tony Kanaan has completed the run. Fourth lap, 223.595, 224.072. At the moment, he is on the outside of row number 10. There are only three cars that can bump in, so he is safe. Yes, he is. Tony Kanaan yeah. makes the field for the 500-mile race.
the Indy 500, drivers put complete trust in their cars. But when you're out on the road trying to make it to work, are you sure you can trust your motor oil? Put your trust in Peak Performance Motor Oil. Formulated to protect against thermal breakdown, Peak is the only motor oil tough enough to be the official oil of the Indianapolis 500. Whether you cover 500 miles in a few hours or it takes hours to get to work, you can count on Peak. When you peak, you win. Jacques Lazier now on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for qualifying. In the ABC Supply Company car, Mario Romancini is now on the bubble at 223.805, but he is ready in case he gets bumped. Now, you talked about Tony Kanaan being safe in the field. Yes, most likely, but remember, if someone is bumped out, they could bump back in. Correct, so couldn't we have a rotation? There's still no way he can get bumped out? No, I, th I think he's pretty safe. I think it's a long shot for him to get bumped out because there's there's three cars in between him. He's on the outside of row 10 right now. It's just that the team directed him, not for the pictures, but right back into line just to be sure. So they're not taking any chances. All right, let's turn our attention toward Jacques Lazier. The first lap is 223.700. That is not fast enough. Just pick it up a little bit each lap Second here. Second lap slower, 223.624. No. AJ Foyt with the stopwatch. Remember, this is the second attempt against this car. So we'll have one more shot at it after this. And he's losing more time. White flag comes out for Jacques Lazier. Lap number three. Still slower, considerably, 223.036. He is not fast enough by about four-tenths of a mile an hour. Looks like Jacques's going to complete the run. Might as well. they get a read of just what the fall off it you know if they have a fall off and they can just bump it all off they're getting data checkered flag Foyt disappointed 223.080 the average 223.360 and Mario Romancini has dodged the bullet and he is nope. not bumped but he obviously is withdrawing his speed and I'll tell now you why the reason is that at this time last year, you've heard that quote from Eric Bachelard when he got bumped out of the field with Tagliani because they did not withdraw their time. And so, well, he didn't, didn't think they had to, but it just he got said so he didn't think fast. Had to. So yeah. a year later, as a team owner, you decide, okay, that didn't work last year. I'm gonna put it back in the driver's hands. Sebastian Saavedra is back in the field. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> <laughs> well, but these guys, you know, the one thing we've been doing this, they weren't bumped out. And I wouldn't say it's a guarantee that we know somebody's really got the speed to bump them out of there. But they've already withdrawn that time now. Yep. That was, I still remember, I can just vividly play that back when Eric Bachelor was saying that last year we were just caught out. We made a mistake. And Eric Batchelor just gave the green flag, guys. Is this in opposition of last year you didn't want to get caught here on the line? Absolutely, yes. We had a poor experience, you know, last year, as you know. So, I mean, he showed a 224-4, you know, early on. So, you know, the track is probably a bit better now. So, hopefully we can do it, you know. There's still a few guys that show some good speed behind us. So, 
I think there was a chance for him to get bumped. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. A lesson learned from last year, guys. Romancini is on his run. The green flag waves. He needs a, an average more than 223.634. Yeah, I don't, you know, I think I would have maybe just pulled back. Risky. I would have pulled back out in line and just waited to see maybe what Sot. No yeah. kidding. I don't I understand don't. this at all. Because, because their back wasn't against the wall yet. There wasn't a long line that they couldn't get back into it. But we know what was in Eric's, Eric's mind. And what he remembers from a year ago right now. Is adding up to be yeah, good speed. Yeah, looks pretty good on the tracker down 224. there. 224. 224.553, plenty good enough. Wow. Well, that's just, and, and, and Eric Eric felt very good that he said he just did a good mid 224. Yep. But it takes some guts. <laughs> the reason he didn't oh, do it God. last year is because it is so risky to withdraw your time. He got burned, and then he says, you know, I got to learn from that. And here he sends Mario Romancini out to do this. He's still got two and a half laps to get it done, but he's looking pretty wise at the moment. Look how that tracker's coming up. Yeah, even yeah. faster. Second lap, 224.857. Okay. Looks like a... Great move for them to pad themselves right now. A couple <laughs> laps to go. Mario competed in the Firestone Indy Light Series last year, winning for Anderson Racing at Milwaukee and Homestead, Miami. Now he's going faster than Tony Kanaan. Remember, we raised the point of why did Tony race back into line? Those cars that were his buffer are now, at least one of them, is running faster than Tony. Yep. Here's the white flag. One more lap to go. Lap three, 224.601. Just a tick slower. Just keep it together. Mm -hmm. He's thinking. <laughs> three. No, make it two more corners to go. <laughs> we got the tough end done, one and two. This is grabbing the bull by the horns here. This yeah, is putting is. the destiny in the hands of the driver, the hands of the team. It was gutsy, and it looks like it's going to pay. Way gutsy. Paying big time. Off the fourth corner, the run is complete for Mario Romancini. He bumps his way into the race. Saavedra is out again. 224.553. The average 224.641. Eric Bachelard makes a great move and withdrawing him and getting him definitely more solid into the field. And now it's Milka Duno's turn to see if she can get into this year's 500 field. On the bubble is Jay Howard with an average of 223.824 miles an hour. Milka has not shown enough speed in the practice recently, but the track is cooling. Let's see if she can get the job done. We definitely heard some really good confidence. Uh, that lap, 222.9 isn't going to be enough, but we heard a pretty confident teammate in Alex Lloyd saying, hey, I think this car's got the speed. Wendy. Mario Romancini, a risky move that ended up paying off. Be honest, were you comfortable with that? Oh, much better now. I mean, we knew we were in the bubble, and uh, it's quite risky. It's been a tough day, for sure, the toughest day of my career. I mean, it's so much. Really? So, toughest day of your career? Yeah, here. I mean, it's so much pressure, you know. You don't know if you will make it or not. I mean, it's my dream to, to be participating in this race, and I to do something to make sure I would be in it and uh, the guys they did an amazing job the car was very good we improved our speed so now I'll sleep tonight I'll sleep good well we got a lot of people in line a lot still going on how do you feel at this moment though with your time yeah that's true I mean still there is a chance I think we until there are guys on the line we might be bumped but I think I did a consistent lap time uh, a lot of guys will have to go faster to, to meet this time, and uh, hopefully it won't happen. But we'll wait until it, it, it's done, as you said. But I, I felt we did a pretty good lap. Thank you. Thanks. Roman.
Mancini right down the outside of row number nine and Howard remains on the bubble with Milkaduno aborting her run and Takuma Sato is on the track to try to best 223.824. And Mario, there are no concerns for you at 224.6. No. No one's gonna get to you, so don't, don't think about that. You can celebrate with, with Eric and your team. He just knows the history and knows that <laughs> he just didn't want to be too too committed. Well, as crazy as things as we've seen yeah. between yesterday and today, I think that's a fair comment, isn't it? But, but it's okay. You, you can, we can be at liberty to put him at ease. Now, Howard is on the bubble. After that, it's Paul Tracy that is on the bubble. And then Tony Kanan. After Jay Howard, again, 223.8 the speed that Takuma Sato is looking for in Paul Tracy is in the qualifying line. And that was what I was mentioning is if you get this yeah. kind of leapfrog thing yeah, right. going, all of a sudden you say, well, there's only three cars to get in. Well, not when you start bumping them out. People yeah. get refired and all of a sudden you get this ratcheting of speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to get, it's just going to be crazy there. In line. Everybody's kind of patting themselves and repatting yourself. Pulling out and getting back in. Green flag waves to Kuma Sato on the way. Ooh, turned in at 227 today in a headwind. That's a big number. That's a big number. And, and again, I come back to the confidence that we heard in Jimmy Vassar saying we got our, our good mid-224 set up on this that the, the teammates liked. So... He just turned into 231 and a half Whoa. into turn three. This thing yeah. is flying. Track's getting happy the last 15 minutes here. 224.373 for Takuma Sato. Oh, so, so, you know, you said it yesterday. We can't just judge off of ultimate high-end speed. You right. got the rolling speed through the corners because those are big numbers in terms of straightaway, straightaway numbers. Well, what it tells us is he's trimmed out. That means that he isn't carrying a lot of downforce, and it's going to take a very, precise job of driving to keep this thing up where he wants it. He slipped a little, but he'll be right on the edge of a 224 flat. Ooh, actually slipped a 223.9 now. 223.996. Yeah. And like you said, is that's where it's tough. Through the corners, the car's just sliding around that little bit of lunch. He's on the podium here at Indianapolis in the 2004 United States Grand Prix, driving for the Lucky Strike, Strike Bar Honda team in Formula One. Of course, in Formula One, you only have to do one fast qualifying lap. It's much different, two and four in a row. Sato crashed yesterday morning in practice. Will this is a little better. The 500. This is a better lap. White flag, lap three, 224.207. Good enough to bump Jay Howard. He picked up his turn in turn one. He's picked it up to 228.8. And he's off at two. He's on the home stretch here. Let's see if he gets a turn three big number. 31.4. Whoa, up yeah, in the gray. High. Up in the gray. <laughs> Bring it home. Come on. Tokyo, Japan, Takuma Sato driving for KV Racing Technology in the Lotus Colors qualifies and bumps Jay Howard. Sato's four lap average, 224.178. Tracy is on the bubble. We have a lot more to go here in the final 15 minutes in Indianapolis. Qualifying for the 2010 Indianapolis 500 on Versus is brought to you by IZOD, the official apparel sponsor of the IZOD IndyCar Series, available at Macy's. And by Peak Performance Products. When you peak, you win. And by Apex Brazil. To learn more about our Brazilian goods and services, log on to experienceourenergy.com. And 
Indianapolis. The qualifying continues. Jay Howard out of the race right now has just completed his first lap. It's a 223.920, just enough to bump Paul Tracy. He needs better than 223.892. It was a 223.920, and Sarah Fisher, the car owner, is praying for more speed. And he's speeding up. That was a good end of the racetrack. He's just on the edge of getting into the 224s, which he's going to need to do to give him a bit of a buffer. This should be just, oh, he's just slipped down to a very high 223. It's a 223.884. Slower than lap number one, but still. Boy, he can't let it slip. Good he's, enough, yeah. He's, he's, he's got to right He's got to adjust whatever. If he's losing the front end, he's got to get that front end to work a little bit more. If he needs to stick the rear of that, he's got to got to use that jacker or the bars on there just to get a little bit more. Yeah, he's starting to slip away from him a little bit. He's, he's getting down to a 23.6. Really looks like the car is sliding on those fire stones as he, he comes off the corner. White flag, three laps down, one to go. Jay Howard, lap number three is 223.557, and that puts him below the speed needed. They're swinging. TK is being pulled out of the line. He was next in line, but they're pulling the car out. He could have withdrawn and gone again, but no, he's not going to do it. And Jay Howard is so close to being in the race, but not oh, quite enough. Oh, he had a lift. Big lift. It's over now. And that you have a tailwind coming into turn three, and that's yeah. where that was. That wind hits you in the middle and pushes you up the track. Yep. You'll Checkered see that at the time. That'll, that'll drop it right off. Fourth lap is 223.080, 223.610, and you can see the disappointment on Sarah Fisher's face. Her second car is not in the 500. Paul Tracy remains on the bubble, and there he is. Will he withdraw his speed? Guys, it's guys, right. I'm standing. I'm, I'm standing down here right now. They've just signed the paper. They have fired it, and you're about to hear it. He's on it. On his way out. He's withdrawn. So who does that put back in? That puts Howard back in. Jay Howard's Howard. back in. You so, bet. Now, did you notice that the craziness in line there? I saw all of Jay Howard's guys in their yellow shirts kind of saying, clearing the way, meaning he's coming down pit road, and he's going to get back in that sure. line. Yeah. You bet. So there Paul he is. is. Yeah. Paul nope. Tracy is rolling the dice here. He's withdrawing his previous speed. He is not in the race right now and must get an average of 223.610 or better to get in. But also remember, Tracy has a good gauge. His team car yep. with KV Racing is Sato, and Sato just went out. And what we heard from Jimmy was they're all running similar setups. So I think, again, that confidence carries over to saying... Okay, Pete. Yeah, but Paul, Paul has struggled more than Takuma in the heat. So this is risky. As it was for oh, Bachelor and Mancini. Makes we, it good, though. <laughs> the last two years, we have seen some excitement, and I don't remember it being that way the <laughs> previous so five years past that. I can't remember it. Prior to that. Oh. Remember, if he touches the wall, he's not in the race because he withdrew his That's time. Right. That's right. Green flag comes out. Ten miles for Paul Tracy to get back into the field. Which is a totally different game that we were watching yesterday at this time because those top nine guys were all guaranteed and they didn't have to withdraw their time to better their time. Right. He turned in at 227.1 into turn one. Now, here's where there's a tailwind. We've seen big numbers from his team car. That was 230 even. Oh, he's Whoa. high again. Oh, man. And it got loose. And that is where the wind's hitting you. As soon as you come off of three. This may the bite them. This might be, this might, he might have taken himself out of the Indy 500. 223.704. That is good enough. 
<laughs> it's good enough. 223.610 is what he needs. Oh, and get an exit off the corner very high. Seven minutes to go so, and qualify. So if he can't maintain this, do you wave him off and say, come on in and we try and get back in that line? He's, I don't think he's, he's losing enough. speed. He's losing speed. He's down to low 223s now. It's not good. So again, so do you get a yellow and get him off the track and get him back in and get him, represent him, hopefully? Good question. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the second lap. It's 223.070, and now he is below what's needed. Jay Howard is back in this show yes. as it sits right now. Wow. They're going to wave it off. They're going to abort the run. He's that, got one more. That's what he's saying. That's what just what you're saying is. Mm. But is there time? Remember, if something goes, if there's an incident on the track, and oh boy, he was in it. No, Sarah, you're you're you're, you're back okay. in. You're, safe, you're back in. You're okay. <laughs> you're back in. <laughs> For the moment, you're okay. But Paul Tracy is not. He withdrew his speed, took himself out of the race, and didn't make the run fast enough. Jay Howard is in line, and he is on the bubble. Now does Jay Howard take himself out? Here's Jacques Lazier that is now on the racetrack. Okay, watch. This watch. is the first time that he got into turn three with the tailwind, and it, that was... That was close, and it was the wow. next... It's the next lap after that that he it really got. I mean, it it steps out right here. I think it is just flies. That's when they talk about it. Just just there. just flies on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. Watch. This is that next lap. Watch this. There it gets sideways. Yep. Doesn't just brush up. It gets sideways. Not due to lack of trying. Wow, can you believe Paul Tracy may not make the race? Nope. Jacques Lazier is going to try here. And again, Jay Howard, who's back in the race. And the speed that... Oh, oh look out. Oh, that was, that was saving that dump of the throttle. So he'll be yeah. back in. He didn't and take the flag, so that's not an attempt. Yeah, so because that would have been his third, third attempt. That was it. That, that would have been, been the end of the road. But that's they didn't right. take the green. Yep. <laughs> Look at this save, folks. Ooh. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> he didn't just save that once, did he? Mm. <laughs> I think we freed it up a bit too much. What do you think? Nice going, Jock. Jay Howard still in the race, and more qualifying coming up. is out for Milka Duno and she begins her attempt and she almost wrecked on her warm-up lap. Came very, very close to that outside wall in turn number one. The situation is she needs a 223.8 to get into the field and to bump Jay Howard. And all indications are that she does not have adequate speed to do so. Lab number one is 219.429. Tony Kanan was next in line. They're going to pull that car. He's second on the bump list at the moment. Now Howard is in. Are they going to pull him out? It's decision they time. They just handed the paper. They are going to fire this car up, and they're going to send him out. Oh, what a bad <laughs> move, I think. Saying Paul Tracy. If, here's the thing. But but if he passes, Paul Tracy's next. Yeah. But so they're putting it in their hands. Oh man. So Paul Tracy's now going to be back in. But right? there's not yes. enough. Yes. There's not enough time for another qualifier after this. This is it. A minute and a half to go. They're showing. Yeah. So no, no, Paul Tracy would be back in right now. Right. That's what's happened. Oh boy. I don't, I, you know what, I don't know Here's how it breaks that. down, guys. Give it to now us, Jack. it's all in Jay Howard's hands. Tracy is back in, but Jay Howard likely will be the last guy out with one minute and 13 seconds of counting to yep. the gun. So it's 10 miles, do or die. Wow. Talk. So will 
Tracy make the 500 field. It all depends on what Jay Howard can do on this final qualification run of 2010. How about some of the decisions you just needed to make right there being in that? Well, he saw Paul Tracy take a risk and it backfired, yet they're doing it themselves. I, and that's I say, in trade, we saw that Tracy really struggled to get the speed. So you could have just let him go let on and go. say, because I know I'm in the field and he bumps me out. So, wow. The goal is 223.892. That's the four lap average from Paul Tracy. And in less than 20 seconds, the gun will fire and the qualifications will be done. Here's the green flag. Jay Howard takes the run and the count down to eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. But here's the clarification. Yeah. When we Paul Tracy pulled his time to make another run, you pull it for good. You don't yeah. get it back. Paul Tracy isn't on the bubble. Yeah. Paul Tracy withdrew his time. Sebastian Saavedra is the one back in. He has a crash car, and he might get in the Indy 500. That's, that's what it is, yeah. So the bump speed is 223.634. Tracy is not going to make the race. Lap one for Jay Howard. Is it fast enough? Yes, it is. 223.812. So Paul Tracy does not make it either way because nope. he won't get a chance to run. He yeah. withdrew his own time. Now this is in the hands of Jay Howard. Sebastian Saavedra, again, with a crash car, has a shot to get in. And, and either way, when we just saw Tracy, he doesn't have a shot. No. The gun's gone off. That's He's right. done. He's not in the 500. Field. Will Jay Howard is the only question, or will Sebastian Saavedra be the uh, final one of the field? His time is slipping a little bit, though, Bob. Ugh. He's losing speed. Second lap for Howard. 223.270. Oh. Oh. oh, no, he's below what, it ne what he needs. They pulled him out. He was in. <laughs> they gave up a time when he was in. And it's not going to work. Oh. Uh, disbelief, huh? How about that for Saavedra? Saavedra in heard Autosport. He's probably in his rental car driving to the hotel thinking, I didn't make it. He's yep. turned, making a U-turn. Yep. Got a crash race car, and he still makes the event. White flag comes out. Lap three for Jay Howard. Is 222.813. This will not get it done. And look at Sarah. Oh. They had a choice. And I wonder if they got spooked. I wonder if they got spooked with Tracy behind, not realizing he had already withdrawn his time. Yeah. And that he was out. Saying, oh, well, Tracy's back in, but no. No, he, he wasn't. Was he he gave up his time. Yeah. Here's the checkered flag. Qualifications are over for 2010. The final qualifier, Jay Howard, and he does not make the 500. His four lap average, 223.120. Sarah Fisher's second car will not be in the 33 car lineup. Sebastian Saavedra is the slowest qualifier in the field, at, or at least uh, the 33rd starter. We got a lot to wrap up. Stay with us. We'll be on the air for another 27 minutes. Go, Jack. It's the longest walk that Paul Tracy probably has had to make in quite some time. I mean, uh, you know, I just got to thank the KB team. You know, I mean, uh, you know, the car was quick all week when it was cold. It was uh, it was quick this morning when it was cold. And as soon as the track temperature came up, we just couldn't get the handle on it. And Paul, take, take me, me through, through the thought process in withdrawing the car. I was just sitting in the car. And, you know, they made the decision, we're not going to sit on the bubble. We're going to go out and run quicker in the car in this temperature. Uh, we couldn't get it done. So, you know, hats off to TK and the, the guys that got it in the show. You know, when uh, we needed the car to run in the heat, it wouldn't run. It, it wasn't for a lack of trying. We threw a bunch of changes at it. And the car was just sliding all over the place, and, uh, you know, that's life. Now, you go out there, the car's been withdrawn. It's all on your shoulders, and you had multiple moments in yeah. the cockpit. Yeah, no, I was, it was, I was hanging on, you know, and when you're sliding like that, you're just scrubbing speed off. But uh, I got to thank Geico and all our sponsors and, you know, Monster and Ride Tech, everybody that was involved in, in helping 
helping us out here. You know, it's, it's cuts deep. You know, this is uh, all the preparation that I did to get ready for this. It's just, uh, it's a hard blow. When do you think it'll fully sink in? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, we're still working on our Canadian deal. And uh, hopefully we'll get that, and we're going to announce that coming up. And uh, you know, just uh, be a long drive home in the motorhome. That's for sure. All right, let's go to Lindy Thaxton. Sarah Fisher, nice enough to spend a few moments with us. We can see with you right now just the emotion that the Indy 500 can bring. But you got to try, right? I honestly can't believe this is happening. I mean. Um Jay kicked the 67 car all around this racetrack all month long, so I don't know. Clearly there's an issue there. Um, it's not from a lack of trying. You know, Service Central has been back in this program 110 percent, and I'm sure they're going to be behind it, but uh, it's pretty detrimental to our year. Talk about why the decision was made to go ahead and pull them and send them back out. Well, that program runs itself completely. You know, I, I don't, uh, I run the 67 with Tom Brown and uh, and John O'Gara, Andy and, and Mikey, and everybody runs that program. So I wasn't even down there. Um, you know, I think it was the best decision that we had to make, though, with, with everything with Paul was doing, and just, that's racing. Clearly disappointing. You mentioned it's detrimental. Why is that? Oh, it's a pure fact of not being in the team leader's circle, you know, points. And uh, when you're not in the leader circle points, you're not guaranteed the prize money to start this event. So, um, you know, it's detrimental to our sponsors. It's detrimental, you know, to our budget. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to do now. Gonna, we're going to have to plan and, uh, you know, come up with a strategy to get through the season. Sarah, we appreciate your time. Thank you. No question, tears from Sarah Fisher there as her second car did not make the race, but the hugs are for Tony Kanan, who did make the 500, but will start in 32nd position in the middle of the final row. Back with more in just a moment. Back here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, qualifying is done. We're going to listen in on a phone conversation to Sebastian Saavedra in the hospital. I'm on the phone with Sebastian right now. We, we can't believe this. Uh, there, he's at the hospital getting checked out, but... Did you I'm, give him the news? Hold on, Sebastian. Give <laughs> him the news. I told him. You're in. You're in, buddy. I mean, this is the most amazing turn of events. I mean, I don't think there's ever been drama in qualifying on bump day like this, at least forever that I've ever been here. And, uh, you know, my partner Steve Newey and I here, we, we put so much on the line with this little team to to be able to come out here and, and try and qualify with a rookie driver and a bunch of guys that, that are just amazing mechanics. And, um, you, you know, fate was on our side today because uh, that's the only way I can explain it. And you just, you don't know what this meant to our team because uh, we put everything on the line to make this race well and let's go back because it'll take a look at what almost was yours and sebastian and steve's undoing shaking a car down in the heat <clears throat> well we waited you know but we had to go out we had to get a feel for the conditions we we figured we were going to get bumped and we'd have to go out and defend and we really weren't going for all out speed it was just a run to just feel the car out and see what what it was going to do in this kind of condition and <clears throat> you know I, I think it just got away from him and it was so slick out there and the kid did an amazing job he didn't put a wheel wrong the entire month and you know he really we gave him the best car we could but we knew we didn't have the resources of anybody else yeah. I mean we, you were done that's the only car you had we, I, we didn't have parts we didn't have anything you know we, we were just like two men in a truck racing <laughs> but but we had great people we had great people we had a great sponsor and William Rast and and you know and we had a great driver and hey you know, important just let's update unbelievable. update us on Sebastian's condition <clears throat> well all I can tell you right now is they took him to Methodist Hospital they're running some more checks but uh you know, we're hopefully he was able to get out of the car under his own power, wave to the crowd. That's always a good sign. So, uh, you know, I'm sure he's feeling a heck of a lot better right now knowing he's in the race. Hey, congratulations to you guys. And, Bob, one thing, when you know you were out and then you're back in the Indianapolis 500, that is a magic elixir that is not beatable by anything. <laughs> you're right, and especially when it comes from two men and a truck racing. <laughs> <laughs> the 11th row, Takumo Sato. Tony Kanan and Sebastian Saavedra. And yes, Tony Kanan is in this year's field, but what an effort he put up.
have just qualified the fifth fastest field in Indianapolis history. The average speed 224.974 and a member of the field is Tony Kanaan, Robbie. Eight years at the Indianapolis 500. He's never qualified outside the sixth position. I'm sure you're more than happy to give up that streak today after all you've been through. Yeah, it was a tough day, Rob. I think uh, I've never had uh, so much stress in my life. And I think uh, I've been through a lot of things. But, um, you know, uh, things turned around so quick here. We had a car to be in the top nine, and uh, we were a bit too greedy yesterday. And uh, we ended up crashing. And then this morning, um, we don't know what happened. I mean, it was just... Uh, you know, uh, a very, very weird run. I did my installation lap and just, uh, I went out of the pits and that, that that's what happened right there. I mean, uh, looks like the car was touching a bit, but we don't know, we don't, we have no idea. Couldn't believe, I thought I was having a dream about yesterday's crash. And then, uh, since then, uh, you know, uh, the boys did a great job. I mean, I gotta thank the whole team, the whole Andretti Autosport, but especially the 37 guys, which were my guys last year. Ryan Hunter Ray to give me his gearbox. It didn't run all day today, so I could, I, I would, have, for me to be able to do this. And uh, you know, everybody wonders why I do so much for this team and uh, for this. I think uh, I've never seen so many guys in so many different colors working in my car. And if it was never a payback, everybody wonder what, what would I get back from this team when I do all the things that I do for them. Today was the day. I overheard you say you could throw it away at any given time. You didn't want to put the car back out there while it was still hot. What was going through your head during this qualifying run? You still made changes up to that moment. Oh, I made changes and I was fighting with the car. It was just very, a very difficult day. I spoke to Dario today and, and and a couple of the guys and they said the track was definitely worse. And the morning was good. We couldn't do, we couldn't run because we had the crash and. Uh, over there, nothing was going through my mind. I was just really concentrating on to make the best as I could. And, uh, you know, uh, I have to say, uh, I've never thought of starting at 32nd place in the Indianapolis 500. It feels better than being on the pole. This feels better than the 2005 pole that I had. Well, it had to make you feel good, too, because when you pulled up to line, when you came out of the garage, the crowd was on their feet. They wanted to see you in this field. I mean, I don't get very emotional, Rob, in my life. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, I think I, I had to learn in a hard way. And I don't cry very often. And uh, I can say that today, every time I came out, which was five times, I had tears in my eyes just to see the whole the whole people and uh, obviously I lost my composure after qualifying I did a Helio style my countrymen and uh, it was they made me cry he has taken the pole here before guys he has never won but now that he's in the field at 33 he has his chance next weekend watch out he is one of the most popular drivers here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and to see him struggle the way he did yesterday and today wow and to see it all pay off is very, very rewarding. Back in a moment. 33 have made it, four did not. And the four who failed to qualify, Paul Tracy, Jacques Lazier, Jay Howard, and Milka Duno. The driver who will occupy the inside row 11 last row position is with Lindy Thaxton. Takuma Sato in the field for your first Indianapolis 500. What has been the biggest surprise about this whole thing for you? Well, it was uh, such an, an amazing uh, event, really. Um, to be honest, to me, what happened to me the last 36 hours, it was just a really big moment, you know. I had, uh, had, uh, had a pretty hard crash yesterday. We tried a different qualify setup. One of them was a bit too aggressive. But then uh, we came back this morning and this team did such a, an amazing job, an outstanding job to one piece back in the car. And uh, jump back in the cockpit, I was happy and comfortable. The question is, you know, building up again. And, uh, you know, we took a whole day to build up the speed. And uh, the last half an hour was a real chaos. Uh, a lot of confusion in the communication. But I think we made it. You know, we made it such a great moment. And the team did such an outstanding job. Of all the years you dream about being here, does it even compete to the real thing? It is. I mean, the Indy 500 is such a pinnacle of the motor racing. And uh, it, it's such a great event. I probably doesn't understand completely because I haven't experienced in the Sunday but for now in the qualify we are we're on the grid which is a fantastic and I know the Indianapolis is just such a, a great enthusiastic fan base we, you know, when I was here in the final already it's such a great moment and now we're going to the proper direction in turn one and uh, I'm really looking forward to the Sunday afternoon and real quickly were you surprised at some of the people who didn't make the field including your own teammate 
Yes, uh, I really need to know what happened to the uh, the pole. Uh, it must have been some problem or something because otherwise it can't be happening. But um, you know, team did a great job. You know, we had such a difficult moment, but I think uh, KV Racing did a great job. And the finally, you know, beautiful lotus green color is back in India. Such a, I'm really proud of part of it. Thank you, Takuma. Jack. Well, you said yesterday when you got bumped, you had a bad feeling. Little did you know what you were feeling. Yeah. I uh, mean, this is uh, <laughs> pretty disappointing to say the least. Um, yeah, how we roll out and do 225.9 this morning and then can't do <laughs> fast enough laps to get in a race is beyond me. Um, whatever, obviously, the sunshine has a bigger effect on these cars than, than, what, we, uh, <laughs> than what we anticipated. And, um, yeah, I'm just really pissed for my sponsor, to be honest. I mean, Service Central, they're great people. They're, um, you know, 110% behind me, and, uh, yeah, I couldn't ask any more from them. Are you, are you beginning to think that maybe in the eyes of that IndyCar series, you just can't get a break? I'm starting to think that maybe next time I come back, I'll win it because I get all my bad luck out of the way. <laughs> I mean, this, uh, there ain't no words that can describe... I just, I just, I don't get it. I just, I'm baffled. And you know what, guys? There are no words to answer that. Because this is Indy. He's on the outside looking in. There's always next year, but it's a tough pill to swallow to not be able to make your way into this field. Listen to this. Here is... What are you going to do? What are we going to do? We're throwing and going. Tiffany, you got it? Yep. Start it up. Let's go. That was the decision that turned out to be wrong. They withdrew the speed, and he couldn't get himself back into the 500-mile race. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. From pole day to race day. Indie Month on Versus. Time trials conclude with Carb Day, Friday at 11. Well, it's all over. What we started yesterday at 11 o'clock has concluded. Take a look at the starting lineup for the 2010 Indianapolis 500. There are six rookies in the field. We had hoped for five women. Four of them made it. The 33 drivers represent 13 different countries led by nine Americans. The average speed of the field, as we indicated, 224.974 miles an hour. That is the fifth fastest field in Indianapolis 500 history. Back in row number eight for this year's Indianapolis 500, you'll find uh, two rookies and Danica Patrick, who will be, of course, catching the spotlight of a lot of the media in the next couple of days as they move toward Boston and New York City and Bristol, Connecticut. But the fact is that it was uh, an unbelievable day of qualifying both yesterday and today. Lindy Thaxton. Bob, I think what stood out the most to me today was just the raw emotion from everything on the good side. I mean, just imagining what Sebastian Saavedra was thinking on the other side of that phone call that we heard and the bad. Clearly, Tony Kanaan and Robbie Floyd, I think what I won't most forget about this day was standing next to Sarah Fisher as she had tears streaming down her face as she watched her teammate try and make this field. Well, we saw tears of joy today and tears of sorrow. You know, next weekend we'll see 500 miles, 200 laps three hours of racing and out of the 33 drivers one of them will win and I know the longest yard was a football movie but I want to show you the longest yard it's right here the yard of bricks next weekend one rider will be infamous he's going to cross this line first after 200 laps Jack now this is the way they're going to start but at the end of the four-hour contest as hopefully is not the way they're going to end it's a chase for illusions it's a chase for being immortal it's called the greatest spectacle in racing every driver that has ever wanted has said that his life has been changed forever. There are 33 men and women that will chase that elusive title and their picture on the Borg Warner Trophy one week from today. If you win it, your life changes forever. We'll have to wait. What else can you say except I feel bad for the four drivers that didn't make it, but congratulations to those who did and endured a lot of emotion, a lot of problems in the last 48 hours. Yeah, I mean, how about that? TK's in, 
Paul Tracy, he's not. But but I, I, I love the comment from Brian Herta. Two men in a truck racing, <laughs> and you had Howard and Tracy that pulled their times and popped Saavedra back in there. You can't script that. I mean, the emotion of the Speedway and, and what it can do, fantastic. And that was the story of the day. It wasn't necessarily what happened behind the steering wheel. It's what happened on the timing stand. Mm -hmm. It was the teams, two teams. First, a very gutsy move by Eric Bachelard to pull his time that worked. Two other teams saw it, said, that looks like a good idea. Let's try that. Big time backfire. Two people pulling themselves right out of the picture. And so it ends here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for qualifying. But remember, we will have more coverage on Carb Day on Friday, the final practice, the Freedom 100 for the Firestone Indy Light Series, and also the uh, pit stop competition. And then, of course, a post-race show at the Indianapolis 500 when it's all over. So as usual, highs and lows in the final day of qualifying for Indy. Chances taken, some paid off, others did. Tears were shed, both joy and sorrow. 33 have realized their dream and will take the green flag a week from today in the greatest spectacle in racing. Cycling action coming up next, the Tour of California. Join us Friday at 11 Eastern for Carb Day from right here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. For more information on the IZOD IndyCar Series, go to Versus.com. Thank you so much for hanging with us the past two days. For Jack Aroot, Lindy Thaxton, Robbie Floyd, Robbie Buell, and Jan Bikas, I'm Bob Jenkins from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the greatest race course in the world. We can break out. We can be free. Faster and faster, you and me.